Are you guys tired? I'm tired. The past couple of weeks have been absolutely crazy. I've been making a ton of videos. I took a couple of days off here, and now we gotta get back into it. Now, I know you guys have been really enjoying the MacBook Pro content, and let me know what other stuff you would like to see with the new MacBooks. I still have five of them, so hit me with what you got. What do you wanna see? But in the meantime, I wanna talk about what's next. Obviously, these MacBooks were a really big step, but a lot of people are wondering what Macs are next, how much is left to go, and what exactly does all of this mean for the future of the Apple Silicon transition? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today because over the past couple of weeks, there's been a little bit of news, but I haven't had any time to cover it. So we'll jam it all together into one big video, and we're gonna talk about what we're expecting for the future of Apple Silicon. Get subscribed, let's go. Today's video is sponsored by Honey, the number one shopping tool in America. Honey is a tiny but powerful button that hides up there on your web browser and unlocks a ton of serious savings. Honey is super easy to use. Just add it to your web browser and it'll search automatically for the best coupons and discounts. On tons of your favorite shopping websites, Honey will automatically apply coupons for you to save money without you having to do a single thing. Honey works best because it's searching to save you money on the stuff you're already buying on sites you're already using. And also Honey gives you the peace of mind of knowing whether you're missing out on any savings. If it says there's no active coupons, you know you've got the best deal already and you're not missing out on any savings. Everyone loves saving money and Honey is totally free. So to sign up today, head down to the link in the description below or go to joinhoney.com slash lukemiani and let the savings begin. And now back to the video. Everyone get ready, all right? I want you to savor this video. Really watch it, enjoy it, drink it all in because we are about to be entering another tech drought. Historically, November, December, January, February, and then sometimes March, not a lot happens. So we've now, we're now staring down the barrel of another three or four month tech drought, at least in the Apple space. So while we're getting excited for that, uh, we might as well talk about the news that happened over the last several weeks. Because, you know, as things tend to go with Apple, you know, everything kind of happens all at once. So we had new MacBook Pros, and then also everyone's like, hey, guess what? I've got new info on future Apple Silicon products. And I'm like, cool, wait on that. I gotta do other stuff first. So this is me now catching up to all the other stuff that has happened. And we start with the MacBook Air. At least we think we're starting with the MacBook Air. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. Cause here's the, here's the situation, folks. John Prosser, all the way back at the beginning of this year, gave us these renders for a colorful new MacBook that is sort of in keeping with the design theme of the iMac. And now in October, we just had some updates on that design. Now this MacBook is a little bit of a conundrum, I'm gonna be honest, because everyone and their uncle has been referring to it as a MacBook Air. And these rumors make me even more skeptical about this MacBook Air being a direct replacement to the current MacBook Air. Here's why. Dylan DKT, a really, really accurate leaker, tweeted out last month that the upcoming MacBook Air will come out somewhere in the middle of 2022 with MagSafe, a 1080p webcam, USB-C ports, a 30 watt power adapter, and no fans, and have a full size row of function keys. So that is interesting because number one, that supports the earlier leaked design that John Prosser had, but now we have a little bit more detail. Now in this thread, Dylan continues and says that the mini LED option is likely but not confirmed. However, the MacBook Air is $1,000. You can't even get an iPad Pro for $1,000 with mini LED. So do we really think that this MacBook Air is gonna be at the same price point? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me because if, if this new MacBook Air is supposedly getting all of these upgrades, right? The new design, MagSafe, mini LED, that's big. At $1,199, what does that do to the M1 MacBook Pro? It's $100 more, but would have a worse display, worse processor, worse design, worse 
everything, really. So why would they keep that around? They'd have to discontinue the 13 inch MacBook Pro as well as the 13 inch MacBook Air. That would knock out two solid price points and you'd kind of split the difference at $1,199. Interesting. Well, two days after that initial report, John Prosser came out with some more clarifications, updated renders for the new M2 MacBook Air. And in these updated renders, we have a notch on the display as well as MagSafe 3 on the side. And then we have two Thunderbolt ports just like the current MacBook Air, but they're split left and right with a headphone jack remaining on the right. They also updated the design to feature a white keyboard well, which is in keeping with what we saw on the MacBook Pro, and overall just kind of made these renders fit in with the design elements that we've now seen on the MacBook Pro. In my opinion, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Apple to keep the 13 inch MacBook Pro around if this new one is going to be better and also be more powerful because we have the M2 chip, which has been rumored to feature an increase in GPU cores from seven or eight to nine or 10. Uh, now we don't know a ton about the M2 chips internal architecture. So there's been some rumors suggesting that next year's A16 chip could be a four nanometer process. Maybe the, the M2 could be based on that as well. Only time will tell, but I would assume if we're moving up to a numerical value, an, an M2 versus an M1, there should be some architectural differences. And that might affect when we're going to actually get these chips. On that note, if Apple is going to be updating the architecture of this chip, uh, I think it's entirely possible that architectural differences could be highlighted on the Mac before they come to the iPhone, rather than starting with an iPhone-based cycle, as was the case last year with M1. So moving up the product stack, there are still some Intel Macs that need to be replaced with Apple Silicon versions, namely the Intel higher end Mac mini, as well as the 27 inch iMac. In the last week or so, we've had a number of rumors about these devices. And the first one is that the M1 Pro or M1 Max could be making their way to the Mac mini pretty soon. This is something that I think makes a ton of sense. After all, the M1 Mac mini is literally the same internals as the M1 iMac, the M1 iPad Pro, the M1 MacBook Pro and Air, all of that stuff. So for this new higher end Mac mini, it would make sense to just take the exact same guts, the exact same SOCs that you would find in the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros and just stick them in a little box. Now we have that new design that John Prosser leaked quite a while ago. And I think it would make a ton of sense to just marry that with the chips we just got. I think that's gonna be a really, really compelling option because for people who want the power but don't necessarily want a laptop, the Mac mini will offer a way to buy the same M1 Pro and M1 Max chips in a less expensive form factor where you can use your own monitor, keyboard, and mouse. If precedent is to be believed, then this new Mac mini could start around $1299, maybe $1499. Currently the Intel higher end Mac mini is 1099. I think that's a bit ambitious. I think we would see a two or $300 price increase, but still you'd be able to get a pretty well specced M1 Pro Mac mini for under $2,000 with really solid performance. And I think that's gonna be a really killer product. I can't wait to take a look at it. Now, a similar story unfolds when we're talking about the 27 inch iMac because Dylan DKT, the same leaker we talked about earlier, gave us some pretty tasty new details about what these new iMacs could entail. So Dylan says that this new iMac or iMac Pro could feature uh, pretty much the same design as the iMac that we got back in April, but with a scaled up version, a 27 inch display with ProMotion and mini LED. He's saying that Face ID was tested, but not confirmed. I'm personally a little bit skeptical on that because Apple has just been resisting Face ID at every opportunity on the Mac. But he also says that it would feature basically the same internals as the MacBook Pros, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, M1 Pro and Max. Curiously, he says this could come out as soon as the first half of 2022. And really interestingly, he said that there may be an additional configuration but he doesn't know for sure. Now I had a conversation with Dylan privately and we discussed this additional configuration. Basically my hypothesis is if this does exist, it could be essentially two M1 Pros or two M1 Maxes running together in, in basically a chiplet, but really more like an extended chip type of configuration. Now, when I proposed this to him, he said that it was possible due to the form factor 
but he wasn't sure if this would be the direction Apple wants to go, given how the iMac 24 was just the same as the other M1 devices in an iMac form factor. But it is worth noting that if Apple wants to use the name iMac Pro, I think they do need to step it up a little bit with a higher end configuration because, you know, when you're comparing the MacBook Pro to the previous generation, obviously there's a lot of performance gains there. But when you look at the iMac Pro, which I am right now, I have one, it's 18 cores, 128 gigabytes of RAM, Vega 64, that, that's a tall order. This CPU is more powerful than an M1 Max. You know, it's, it's 18 cores, it's a Xeon, it's an absolute monster of a processor. So if Apple does wanna call this thing the iMac Pro, they need more performance than the 18 core iMac Pro offers or otherwise it's, it's gonna be a little weird. So we'll see what happens with that. But by and large, I would expect that the upgraded Mac Mini as well as the 27 inch iMac would basically be identical on the inside to the MacBook Pros. In the same way that Apple reused the M1 chip a bunch of time, I think they would do the same thing with M1 Pro and M1 Max. And that just leaves us with one additional Mac. And that is of course, the big daddy, the Mac Pro. Now we've heard rumors for quite a while now that there are additional Apple Silicon processors being tested with 20 and 40 cores and up to 128 graphics cores. Now given what we know about the M1 Max, that's literally four of them, and that would be absolutely mind boggling in terms of performance. So much so that I think nobody would actually need it, but you know I will be buying it and testing it for your amusement and my amusement. But that does beg the question, if it's going to be four M1 Maxes, what do they call it? And how do they manufacture it? Is it literally going to be four M1 Maxes taped together? Will they even sell it as four M1 Max processors? I don't know, but I'm working on some stuff. I'm trying to do some digging to see if I can find any additional information about the processors in this upcoming Mac Pro because I think there's gonna be a lot of stuff to be intrigued about. Now, in terms of the timing for all of this, uh, it seems like the Mac Mini and the iMac Pro, or normal iMac 27, whatever they call it, could come out in the first half of 2022, which is curiously also the time frame that was thrown out there for the MacBook Air. Now, I don't think those things would come at the same event, but I could see like a March event with the Mac Mini and the iMac Pro and then a WWDC or even an April event with the MacBook Air. Um, and then of course we gotta talk about this Mac Pro because Apple's two year transition expires in a year, we're halfway through. So presumably in about a year's time, we should be getting that 40 core Apple Silicon Mac Pro. And along with it, most likely an updated Pro Display XDR with mini LED technology. That, <laughs> that is something to be excited about. So uh, whew, we're talking about a year for, for all of these products. I, I think that's gonna be a really, really fun time. I hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.